Hello, and welcome to the Feeling Good Podcast, where you can learn powerful techniques to change the way you feel. I am your host, Dr. Rhonda Borowski, and joining me here in the Murrieta studio is Dr. David Burns. Dr. Burns is a pioneer in the development of cognitive behavioral therapy and the creator of the new Team Therapy. He is the author of Feeling Good, which has sold over 5 million copies in the United States and has been translated into over 30 languages. His latest book, Feeling Great, contains powerful new techniques that make rapid recovery possible for many people struggling with depression and anxiety. Dr. Burns is currently an emeritus adjunct professor of clinical psychiatry at Stanford University School of Medicine. Shazam! (laughs) Hello! Rhonda! Hi, David, and welcome to all our listeners, wherever you are living and working. This is episode 379. Nope. This is episode... Oh, yes, you're right. It's 379. It follows 378. (laughs) That is so interesting about that. (laughs) Of our session with the wonderful uh, Dr. Tom Gedman. And and last week, you heard the... uh, the, the empathy phase of the session. And uh, today you're going to hear the uh, assessment of resistance and, and, and methods and, and final testing at the end of the, of the session. And that's about all I have to say, except I hope you enjoy it. But Rhonda has something incredibly interesting <laughs> and uh, in, inspirational to say. You know what? Tom is a really, um, you know, he, you know, he's actually a very humble person who is providing a huge service to the UK, and um, you'll hear what it is along the way. And one thing interesting that we did is we in this personal work is we did just a brief moment of relapse prevention to make sure that if and when his negative thoughts resurface, Tom will be able to to challenge them. But David, you did really beautiful work with Tom. You went over the externalization of voices, and you know that that might be the heart of this episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was, it was good, and um, I hope he's getting uh, the the message too that his uh, his shortcomings are actually his his greatest asset. Right, which is awesome. Yeah. So we're very grateful to him, and we hope you enjoy the the uh, exciting conclusion to Tom's podcast. Let's uh, see if we had a magic dial, then you could dial these things down by the end of our session. How how uh, sad and depressed and down would you want to feel? That that was ninety percent. What would be a nice goal for today? Like and to I'm writing it. this down in the goal column on the Daily Mood Log. I like a maybe a, like a fifteen percent. Fifteen, yeah. Okay, and how uh, anxious and panicky and no, I don't want to be panicky. Would you I'd like, like to, to feel? I like to much? turn that down. Ten percent. Ten ten percent. And is is that enough anxiety? I think I think enough. I don't like to be overwhelmed. Like I don't like to lose my clarity. Okay. But I like to be able to keep on my toes. How how guilty and ashamed do you want to feel and remorseful? That was ninety. What would be a good a good dose of guilt? I think fifteen. Fifteen, okay. And then how uh, inadequate and inferior and defective and incompetent do you want to feel? I think the last two maybe five, but the first two, the inferior and inadequate. I think that that. It shows so many. It, it's helped me so much. I think maybe twenty. We call this this category five to ten. How about that? Yeah, yeah. Let's do that. And then, how how lonely do you want to feel? That was seventy. I think um, ten. Ten, and and then how embarrassed and foolish and self conscious do you want to feel? That was ninety. I think fifteen. 15. And then how hopeless and discouraged and pessimistic and despairing did you want to feel? 10. 10. And mm-hmm. how how frustrated, stuck, and, and defeated do you want to feel? That was 90. I think 
10, and then how angry, uh, annoyed, irritated, uh, and upset do you want to feel? That was uh, 70. I think 10% as well. Yeah, Great. around those levels. Yeah. Great. Okay, that, that, that sounds fine. And so we've done our E equals empathy, or A equals assessment of resistance. And what what comes next? I, I, I can't remember. Is it E-A-R? Ear? <laughs> Or, That's or another t- thing. T E A T eat. Do we eat now? What, what's <laughs> the, what, what, what? I think it's an M, big old M. Yeah. What What's that M stand for? Methods. Let's get let's methods. Get into, so yeah, let's yeah. see if we can yeah. use some methods. Um, let's get into it. And of course, we did the testing too with all these these numbers. Mm. What What's What's a thought you'd like to to focus on first? Um. I'd like to focus on the the number two. I waste so much time on videos. I should be quicker. This should be easier. Okay. And and then what are the distortions in that thought if you look at the list of ten distortions? Um I guess well, it's definitely overgeneralization because because I'm wasting I feel like I'm being slow now and I'll always be slow in the future. Oh yeah. That's a good one. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm dwelling on the negatives of slow videos. It's mental filter for sure. Oh yeah. And sometimes, yeah, that's I've, a good I've one. Cre- sometimes I've created quicker content, which has just sure. been as well received um, and discounting the positives, obviously. Um, and what are the positives that I'm discounting? The positives are, um, the fact that some of the videos have been quicker. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. And, and what, what are some other positives that I'm discounting? Mm. I'm not sure. Well, the fact that you're doing it. Yeah. yeah. The fact, the fact that, that you're that working on it. Yeah, the fact that I'm just putting myself out there, for sure. Yeah. What, what are some other distortions in it? Tom, you skipped all or nothing. Was that purposeful? Did I see? Did I? Did I think it was on the thing? Do you reckon? Am I either quick or slow? And the thing in between? Do you think? Or I'm wasting time? Or I'm not wasting time? I'm not sure. I wasn't sure how to put all or nothing. Yeah, I didn't see it as all or nothing. Thinking myself because you're yeah. not saying I'm a total, you know, loser yeah. or something like that. You're just saying I, I should be quicker. Yeah. Yeah, I just yeah. wanted to ask if that was purposeful skip. Yeah, I think I did t- skip it purposefully. But I mean, I guess you could say all or nothing, I need to be quick all the time, or, you know, you have a quick or slow or nothing in between. Whereas, you know, there's, there's not just two, it's not just one quick video and one slow video. So I guess it yeah. could be all or nothing. Um, um, what are some other distortions? Um, oh, yeah, the, I found three more big ones. Yeah, I think. Um, I think definitely it was a should statement. A should. Yeah. 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 And 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 why is that a distortion, the should? Why do we think of that as a thinking error? Because should puts a complete pressure on yourself. And there's only three reasons, as you said, four shoulds. There's the kind of laws yeah. of nature should, the legal should, the moral should, and it doesn't really fit in with this. You know, no one's yeah. written a there's no law universal or otherwise that says i need to be quick at making videos yeah that, 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 videos. That, that's right mm. um and from a scientific point of view you you should not be good at this right <laughs> yeah well isn't that correct why how so well is it true that you have many strengths and and many weaknesses mm-hmm yeah. And are those due to your biology and who you are as a human being? Like yes. your genes and your upbringing and all of that? I think so. And 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 when we say that you 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 should do well on on a medical exam that that would be true because you're smart and and you've studied hard. Does that make sense? Um well it doesn't always work out like that. Well, if we say you you should be enthusiastic about team, would that make sense? 
Well, I'm because, enthusiastic about the team, but I guess because it appeals to you, right? Yeah, it appeals to you more than being a professional wrestler, right? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, and and so when you say I I I should be a, a real quick at editing charismatic videos, is is that is that uh, your natural aptitude? No, it's not. Yeah, so that that's no, so why it's, it's a new skill. Yeah, and then what 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 are some other distortions? Mm. Well, I'm guess I'm blaming myself. Yeah, yeah, right. I love that self blame. Um, yeah, beating up on yourself. Yeah. Uh huh. Putting yourself down. Definitely. How about emotional reasoning? Yeah. I feel I, you know, <laughs> well, there's there's some there's some displeasure that I get the sense that I'm being slow, and then I, I reason as a result of that. When actually, if I felt in a more optimistic way, I would probably not have this sort of distorted thought. So I guess it's emotional reason. Yeah, yeah. I I I feel like I should be doing better, so I should be. Yeah, I feel yeah. like I shouldn't be struggling, so I'm failing. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. For sure. And we could add magnification and minimization and so forth. It's a home um, run, isn't it? Slam dunk. So, um, yeah. So you want to start out on something aggressive like externalization of voices or something gentle like uh, double standard? I was thinking I think of... Said... Go, go, Sorry, go you're, asking, you're asking the I was answering, but he's asking you, Tom. Never mind. You answer. What what do you think? I mean, I had my heart set on a double standard, but we want to do what you want to do. Um, go on, let's do double standard. Why not? Have we got time? <laughs> you want to try the double standard? I just know. I mean, I I love the double standard. I think it really works for people. But I just I just know that externalization of voices just does it. Okay, well, let's just skip it. straight to that then. No, but I no, I want to do what I want to do. No, no, no. <laughs> I know David no, loves externalization of voices too, so why don't we jump to that? Yeah. Um, the, the, uh, right. When you said uh, double standard, I was just wondering if you'd talk to me that way. Um, I, yes. I, you know, that David, you should be quicker and better at, at these videos. You shouldn't be so anxious and klutzy and nervous in front of the video camera. No. No, I wouldn't. I would, I mean, if you wanted some tips and support, I would, you know, be able to give that to you. But, I, you know, I wouldn't put that pressure on you. I know it just doesn't work. Right. It might make, it might make you more anxious and make you feel less supported if I was to tell you all these things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right. So it would be kind of mean, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, yeah. You, you, you just, just try it for a little bit of, Fun and games. Just, just talk to David the way you talk to yourself. <laughs> well, actually, say these voice, say these things back to me, to you, David. You waste so much time on your videos and content. You should be quicker, and this should be easier for you, with your wealth of experience. No, it doesn't how, feel do, good. How, how does that feel? No, it doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel good to call you a smug phony doesn't feel good to say that people are going to judge you yeah that other people are better at making content than you yeah. that you're a joke no it doesn't feel good yeah yeah i might be quicker if my older sisters hadn't teased me all the time when I was when i was little mm. i was cross-eyed and i squinted and i had a crooked smile and every time there someone was taking a picture they'd be teasing me mm. and it really really hurt my feelings and angered me and took me all this time to 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 get over it um, until now until i told told you all of these things about yourself yeah and it's yeah. All that. yeah but any anyway, rate let's jump to externalization of voices what what what's your name tom i'm positive tom and what's rhonda's name you are negative tom and what's David's name? You are also negative Tom. 
You want to kick it off here, Rhonda? Sure, Tom. You know, I hate to tell you this, but you can't be authentic in videos. You know, you, you I always... think we're, we're working on thought number two. We're still I, working I on that one? Get... Okay. Well, that, I mean, okay. Because we haven't, we're not done haven't with it. haven't done with it. Okay, sorry. Um, um, Tom, you know, you waste so much time on your videos and editing the content. You really should be quicker and this whole process should be easier. Yeah, I tell myself this every day. <laughs> um, and hearing it from you is is funny as well. I I do spend a lot of time on the videos. I completely agree. I feel like I want to be able to create the best content for viewers that resonate with the message that I've got, with the skills that I've got, and I want to attract those sorts of people to to help them. And I realize that maybe spending a bit of extra time to be able to make it curated to that audience is is worthwhile but there's no law that says that i need to be quicker there's no law that says that i need this needs to be easier it's not a should statement it would be nicer to be quicker maybe that'll come with time but the time that i'm spending now just finding my feet and just getting used to it and making mistakes and you know learning from them is is yeah that's important and I think, yeah, I'll end it there. <laughs> you end it there? So, yeah. Tom, who won that? The positive Tom or the negative Tom? I thought I won it. What, did you win yeah, it I small it. or large? I won it large. Large or huge? Do you know it was nearing It was nearing huge and I felt, I felt good about the answer. I felt good about... This idea that I shouldn't put pressure on myself, I should just learn from experience and not get ahead of myself. And that felt good to take the pressure off and just learn from, you know, the mistakes and the flaws and and see, you know, who comes as a result of those things. Is yeah, so that was that was big. But I'm saying I'm kind of almost holding back because I want to hear what you guys, I want to hear your ideas. <laughs> so, do, do, do a role okay. reversal. Shall we do a role reversal? Yeah, sure. So I'm the I'm the negative Tom. I'm gonna give it to you now. Positive Tom. So positive Tom, can I speak to you for a minute? Okay, sure. Sure. Yeah, you waste so much time on your videos and your content edits. You know, it's hours and hours sometimes to just make a short video, and you should be quicker. You it should be easier. And you know, you, you know, if you're not gonna get this right, then you're really letting your family down. Mm. Well, I might be letting my family down right now. That's right. And, um, you know, learning to work on these videos, I thought it would be fun. It's not 100% fun. It can be tedious to learn a whole new technology. And it's a big learning curve. And so, um, you know, often learning curves take a long time to get to over the hump. And I'm, I'm, I'm approaching that, but I'm not there yet. That's for sure. And I know that I'm going to get to a place where it's fun because it's a creative process and I can see myself really bringing out the creativity and who I am as a person. And I love that about this process, but my real problem isn't whether I'm slow or whether it should be faster or whether it should be easier. My real problem is listening to the voice in my head that is mm lambasting me and criticizing me that's the voice that i need to banish hmm. yeah so who won that you won that Linda. yeah i'm not how, did you think it was small win or a large win a large win yeah i don't did you think it was a huge win yeah i think so and i I think I really just resonated with you when you were talking about, and you were so expressive. People probably won't be able to see um, <laughs> if it's the, you know, the podcast and you're not watching it on video, but Lawanda was just raising her arms around saying, you're so creative. And I just felt like, yeah, that's what I want to be. I, I want to be able to find joy in this, but it's not there right now. But just appreciating it is just getting over that hump and then getting into that flow, which is it's going to come. And it was that optimism that was really helpful. That right. looking forward and saying where I am now and going forward. And it's also the acceptance. It wasn't neglecting the idea that I'm, you know, 
letting my family down in many ways right now because I'm not, you know, earning to the full potential of this. I'm not created a, you know, a successful business that's, you know, got lots of clients right now, but you know, that will come and it shows that I care about them and it, you know, I loved it. All right. Shall we have you end it and do it one more time? Yeah, let's do that. All right, Tom, are you ready to answer this question mm -hmm. to go through this conversation? Sure. You know, you're, you waste so much time on your videos and the content edits. You know, you really need to be quicker. You should be quicker. This should be easier because what's happening right now is you're letting your family down. You know what? I appreciate what you're trying to tell me. And yeah, I think that I, yeah, right now I could do more in terms of supporting this family, but I know that this is essential work to be able to provide for them later down the line in a sustainable way. So now is time invested. And actually this is the time to be able to get things wrong and make mistakes with the video edits. And this is the time to be able to go up that learning curve, but, and, and you know, use that to be able to create this flow and create this creativity that I know that I've got inside myself. And I know that it will be fine. You know, that it will be fine, but actually this whole process is going to be made 10 times worse by not that thought, but it's the, the thinker it's the, it's the idea is this, the process of that thought and i think what i could do is, is learn from the good things about what it's telling me but just not listen to the constant chatter so yeah screw you in many ways but thank you <laughs> <laughs> and who won that one then i won that one and was that a small large or huge win i think i took i, I took your best bits and i, I like the bit of counter-attack at the end to run there, mm -hmm. so so yeah i thought i won that huge and it felt good it felt good to know that it, it it's there's something there's something to this and there's something that should be embraced mm -hmm. and nice. so to just get it out just get stuff out there just start doing stuff and just do your first take and get it out and people tell you you know that was that wasn't right or you know you could have done this and that's just good feedback it's just not getting it right every single time that's what it's going to be about i think so then, Tom, how much do you believe this thought? Number two, I waste so much time on videos and content edits. I should be quicker and it should be easier. Now that we've done the externalization of voices, how much do you believe that? So it's funny because it's not time wasted, is it? Mm. It's all just, it's just time that's needed. Mm. And if it takes longer, that's just the time needed to be able to learn your craft and learn the skill to something that's quite alien. You know, I've never had to do this before in many ways so i think it is useful to take that time and maybe it will be useful when you look back at this time you know if you are in the future and you go yeah this is where i started from mm -hmm. so yeah i don't believe that it's wasted at zero right good right okay well uh you uh you you might have beaten that other tom there on on the on that one but I just want to point out that you were kind of slow coming up with that positive answer. But more <laughs> important, I, I wanted to remind you that you can't be authentic on on videos. Uh, you 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 just look like uh, such a a smug phony. From now on, I feel like I'm going to be more authentic on videos. But then the times that I need to, you know, be put on a professional face, then I'll just give that my best shot as well. And I guess the more things I do like this, where I'm actually speaking, you know, about the things that matter to me and my kind of human and flawed self, then maybe people will see that one thing and go, who's this smoke phony? And then they'll see the feeling good podcast or they'll read some of the things and realize actually that's not him. And that maybe that'd be a nice, pleasant surprise, you know, cause I'm not, you know, in many ways, maybe I, you know, like you say, David, you know, sometimes you're going to have these tendencies and sometimes, yeah, completely. I'll, I actually maybe admit the fact that, you know, I will look like a smug phony. I like, you know, the photo that I've got on my social media makes me look like a complete smug phony. And, and people, I don't know whether that turns people off or whether that's just expected or not. But like, I, I sometimes resonate with that aesthetic. But actually, you know, hopefully people see that and then see the content that I create and think, yeah, this is this is the real guy behind that kind of, you know, image. Because you never really tell anything from an image, can you? It's about what you see after that. Hmm. Yeah. 
So who, it's who, fine. Who won it's that? fine. I won that. I won that. And I think it's fine. It's fine. To, I, I want it huge because I think it's fine to sometimes be authentic and sometimes not be authentic because if you put enough stuff out that is authentic, people will find you if they want to find you, I think. Mm -hmm. Uh, Could I talk to you for a minute, Tom? For sure. Yeah, please. I saw one of your Instagram uh, videos. Oh, yeah. Uh, Do you you mind if I tell you what I thought of it and what I think of you? I would love, I would love to hear. Huh? I would love to hear that. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Yeah, the uh, I, I thought you looked kind of like a a a, a, a smug phony, and and I judge you. Do you know what Pe- people have been saying that to me a lot recently, and I've been saying that to myself, and and actually, I I really value your feedback because all feedback is good feedback. Some people just don't give any feedback, and actually, that you don't know if it's good or bad. So the fact that you've had the courage to be able to say you looked at my content, you think I look like a smug phony. Hey, what what do you think could be the way to be able to get around that? I've got some ideas, but what are your ideas? You know, I'd love to hear from you. Great. Who won that? I I won that big, and it's more about the feedback element. You know, why would I worry about someone saying something to me when actually it opens up a dialogue that allows them to say, yeah, maybe do this or that, and that will resonate with me, and you know, maybe maybe that's something I could definitely utilize. Yeah, I thought that was huge. That second technique, folks, was the feared fantasy. I wasn't, Mm. that's kind of where you meet the thing that you're most fearful of, the the monster from hell, and we bring it to life with a role play. And and I thought you hit it out of the, hit it Mm. out of the park on on that one. And it kind Uh, of fit into the law of opposites. You know, when you mm. fight smug, phony it automatically makes it true but when you kind of accept yeah i do look like a smug phony it instantly proves that it's not true yeah no doubt that's absolutely right and you that's very eloquently explained thanks from that's lovely are there any other of these negative thoughts that have a hold on you i know you gave us 14 of them but why don't you look at the list and see if there are any left that still have a, a bite getting a bite out of your soul David and Rhonda will judge me for what I'm doing. Which which one? The number four. No, oh, not number four. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, 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 yeah. Uh, David and Rhonda. Well, you want to do externalization of voices or or yeah. feared fantasy or, or 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 survey technique? What what technique do you want to use on that one? Let's do let's do externalization of voices again. Okay. Um, you, okay. you want to? Sure. It's your turn, Rhonda. Tom, are you ready for one more? Mm-hmm. You know, David and Rhonda, they're going to judge you very harshly for what you're doing. Mm. So I think knowing now that in this session, I, I, I don't believe that, but I feel because Rhonda, you do such amazing work and I know that you do it for, you know, reduced price. And I'd love to be able to do that for people. I mean, I do charge, you know, in English, it's 350 pounds for two hours. And I think there's value in that, but I would love to be able to give sessions for free. And I've given it these sessions to friends for free um, because they you know needed it and they couldn't afford it and they got such value from it. But, I, you know, I, I, I'm torn because I want to be able to, give the most help to people but I don't want to feel guilty about wanting to be able to you know ask for some value because I've got a family to support as well and I think that is useful but I I fear the judgment from David and Rhonda because you're such philanthropists and you you give so much time and energy for free and you know low cost and you have that passion I, I love that about you I just I just don't want to I don't want to feel judged for wanting to be able to support my family. And I, and I fear that. And also for, I don't want to feel judged for using your, your tools, David, you know, in ways that, you know, hopefully that resonate with your image, but, you know, combining and blending things and using the teachings that you've given me, you know, these, these tremendous gifts, but using them in different ways with clients, you know, I don't want you to judge me negatively because you know that this is something that I, that I'm just so passionate about. I wanted to get it out to more people. But I guess I, you know, deep down, I know that they won't judge me. But in, in many ways, it's, it maybe it has to be a survey technique. <laughs> maybe it has to go back to you, and I have to ask you, you know, 
what I'm doing. Or feared, be... f- feared fantasy, we, we could do too. Yeah, sure. But I, I just don't know whether I, I will be able to understand truly unless you tell me. Yeah. I can, I can yeah. rationalize it all I want and say, no, you won't judge me. But I guess, you know, hearing what I've said tonight in terms of using you know, your tools that you give me to sure. create video content, to create video courses, to be able to upskill people, to be able to build a business around this. Is this something that you're going to judge me for? I don't know. Well, yeah, who do you want to yeah. ask first? If you want to do, so you don't, you want to do a survey technique now? Yeah. I'll ask, I'll ask you, Rando. Um, I do judge you hmm. because I'm really a judgmental person and it's hard for me to let go of my judgments. But I, I think that my judgments would probably surprise you. I am just madly in awe of what you're trying to do. And I think it's, I think that David has created an incredible structure and a model that's very strong and can withstand people putting their own take on it. Because it's not really, like he says, it's not a school of therapy, it's a structure of therapy. And you clearly are well you're clear an expert in the structure of the team therapy model. And the the way any kind of therapy lives on is by adapting to the society that it's in. And you are a functional medicine doctor. And so you are combining your expertise into the structure that David has created the team model. And through you, it's continu- the team therapy is continuing to live in the UK and where you live and how you present it. So I'm judging you as being an incredibly creative and intelligent and flexible doctor. My judgment is more about admiration than a negative judgment, but it is by the definition, it is a judgment. And I also judge you because okay, you can want I, to... can I can I ask you a question? Stop you for just a second. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm ready. On, I'm going on, a going girl. on and on and on. <laughs> I know. I, I think uh, yeah. Tom is asking you a simple question. How do you feel about Tom? Yeah, I really admire you, Tom. Thank you, Amanda. I admire you so much. Yeah, I think what you're doing is awesome. Thank you. <laughs> I was speechifying. I wouldn't have stopped you there. I would have kept you going for another <laughs> 15, 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, feels I'm, sorry, I'm, I'm <laughs> sorry, but I think it's the heart he's interested yeah, in. Yeah, you're interested in the heart. I admire what you're doing. I think it's super awesome. And I love you're putting your own spin on team therapy and having it create, 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 you know, your, you know, live through your passion. It's a a very admirable. Thank you. That's great. Thank you. (laughs) That's nice. (laughs) (laughs) I also think that you're misjudging me that I do a lot of stuff for free. That's true. But I also do stuff to where I feel like I, I deserve to be valued for the work I do and the effort I've put in and the experience I have. So there's mm-hmm. a balance between giving things away and doing things at a low cost and charging an amount that I feel like I, I deserve to have to support my life, my family. And that's really important to hear because I, I think there is some sort of, I don't know, clinicians, we don't value ourselves in terms of that sometimes. And I think there is, we, we give so much value. You definitely give so much value from this podcast and from everything. You know, you don't have sponsors. You do it for the love of it. You do it to spread the message and it's, and it's incredible. So yeah, I'm sorry for that misjudgment. Um, we're both, we're both seemingly worth the same. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. David, do you judge me for, wanting to take what you have and be able to do these two hour sessions with these kind of pre-assessment questionnaires using your. Uh, well, you know, script. Tom, I, I love you. And I, I, I think that I just admire you so much and feel so close to you because of your brokenness and, and your flaws. I have so many flaws myself uh, that uh, they're uh, that, uh, you know, I, I struggle with a lot of the same issues I've struggled that, that you've struggled with. There was a time when I was, uh, you know, charging people. I, I started out at $25 an hour as a, at the end of my residency when I went into private practice. And then I remember the day that I raised my fees to $35 an hour and I felt like Satan. <laughs> it, it seemed like such an evil thing to, to do. Uh, but uh, 
I, I loved earning money and, and, and being in private practice. And, uh, and then, you know, because of my books and, and other things, I was able to, to back off from that and, and have another source of income. And, and, you know, I'm always trying to figure out how, how to support myself and, and, and my family. And I'm, I'm just lucky that, that I don't have to be charging for, for sessions right now. And I hope mm-hmm. that that day comes from, from, from you, you too, when, when mm-hmm. you, you make the big time and you, you have a, 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 a great, wonderful, prospering practice. And I, I just know that you'll, you'll always remember to, to mention David and Rhonda and the things that you've learned from others. And that's a beautiful thing. And I, I want my work to, to, to spread. And I'm, I'm just lucky to have people like Tom in my life and people like Rhonda in, in, in my life. I feel so incredibly blessed. But the best thing about you, from my point of view, is your humanness and your vulnerability. Uh, I, 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 Tony Robbins is very skillful and very famous and I'm sure incredi- incredibly wealthy. But uh, he, he, he's, he's not my, my, my favorite person. I, I don't mean to judge him, but I mean, he, he's a he, he's a show, showman and, you know, of a high, very level showman. But that doesn't make me, you know, want to trust him or feel close to him or, or, or like him. Uh, I, I don't know if what I'm saying makes sense or sounds like a lot of mashed potatoes or something. No, uh, I mean, I just feel so. I feel so honored that. You know, I get this opportunity to speak to you. You're like you're you're my hero <laughs> in many ways. You got me out of such a dark place that just kept on going into dark places. You know, for many years of my life, and and through your teachings and through Peter Spurrier's skill in being able to teach that, and then also learning from you and Rhonda and Fabrice and everybody else who came on the show. Um, it's just been tremendously life-changing i'll keep on saying i love peter too what a fantastic uh, humble human being kind and down to earth but you're all just so fantastic and i want to be able to just add value to this i don't want to take ideas of my own you know i want to be able to add add value and i I want to be able to spread this so i'm so i mean i'm over the moon that you have given me this opportunity to be able to allow me to do this and be able to take take that on and add some creativity to it but i will always i will always honor you and always say you know this is this is your work and what you what you've been doing because it's yeah. just this gift that you've given the world really david that, that is so neat thank you for that i really appreciate it in a minute we want to hear what you're offering now what's the mystery behind this 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 guy and this these cool things that that he has coming up but let's see how you're feeling right right mm-hmm. now and then then we'll be eager to to sure. hear about your upcoming uh, pro- programs for people and how people get a get a hold of you mm-hmm. uh, but let's let's start on the the sad and depressed how how sad and depressed are you feeling right now Really not sad or depressed at all. I feel like those the externalization portions and, and the survey was a big thing for me. I felt, you know, what I was doing would have drawn some judgment, even though I, you know, I love you both and you are, you know, I know that you're not judgmental people, but I just uh, you can never be sure. So just hearing that, you know, it's gone down to zero. I don't I don't feel any sadness at the moment. I feel okay. joy. <laughs> oh great. How how anxious and panicky and whatever uh are you feeling worried nervous at zero i feel mm-hmm. completely calm okay how how um ashamed and guilty and remorseful are you feeling zero mm-hmm. how um uh, inferior inadequate uh defective and incompetent I'm going to say five because I'm in the presence of greatness. So, and, and don't you don't you forget it? <laughs> <laughs> how, how lonely do you do you, do you feel? <laughs> zero, zero, Z- zero. Oh how, my how, how humiliated uh, and uh, embarrassed? No, embarrassed, uh, foolish, foolish self-conscious. and self-conscious. Mm-hmm. Do you feel? zero i think you you've mm-hmm. beaten out of me you've laughed yeah. enough at me <laughs> yeah. how, how how hopeless and and uh, despairing and you feel it's great i've got a lot of, i've got a lot of hope now a zero 
mm. zero. How frustrated and stuck and defeated. No, I know. I do know where I want to go. So zero. Mm -hmm. And how angry and resentful and irritated and and upset do you, are you feeling? Well, I'm, I'm willing to let this grievance go. So zero. I feel you know, and that's how it goes. You know, you feel better with everything, and and you know, I feel you know, a love for this person. That I felt a bit irritated with at the start of the session. It's not you, either of you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, that's right. completely separate, but. Um, yeah, I know you don't want to reveal who it was, and I admire that for you. But sure. could you at least send us a photo that we could use for the <laughs> <laughs> and maybe yeah. maybe an email if someone wants to contact him? Yeah, no, I, I I really rarely get like angry or irritated, but this just kind of riled me up just very recently. But actually, yeah. that's zero now. I feel you know I feel sure. a lot of respect. I can see where well, betrayal they... betrayal is no fun. It's happened to yeah, me. I no. can tell you for sure. I don't, I'm not, I'm not bothered about it at the moment. It's really yeah. amazing. Well, tell us, uh, thank you for, the, for that. And, what, and, and I guess you're saying the most effective parts for you were the survey technique and the externalization of voices with the counterattack. Yeah. And I think, yeah, exactly. It's externalization of voices, just looking at my thoughts on paper, writing them down. Cause I, I, I know the distortions. I know the things that I'm telling myself are distorted, but it's just the actual act of, hearing other people's take on it and, you know, verbalizing what I want to do. It just gives you, it always gives me an unlock and it always just gives me so much value because you can see it from different angles. And, and the survey technique is so important because I, I, you know, that was something that was causing me a lot of worry. And I think that's what's sometimes missing with one-to-one. -one. I think you can get it from the person opposite you if it's a one-to-one, -one, but I think the groups Oh, definitely something I, I think we need to show people that there is this value in being able to get from, you know, even 10 people around them and say, I am flawed, is, I'm accepted. And for those 10 people to say yes, that or even say no, but that will be fine. You know, the higher versus lower level solution. Yeah. Is, I think that's powerful. So, yeah, I, I thought those three things were tremendously powerful. And the positive reframing has always been a a, a huge boon for me yeah yeah just really see it from a through a different mm. lens entirely it's pretty amazing now tell us uh i'm i'm mm. sitting over here uh, about 30 kilometers from from your office mm. and wondering if if you've got something to to offer me and mm. i understand you do individual sessions you have some kind of programs uh can can you tell me a little bit about what what you do and how how you work and how, what I would do if I want to get a hold of you and get a little mental tune up maybe. So yeah, I mean I I'm currently working with people from the UK and Europe and I'm working out insurance for people who work in the United States and Canada and I think uh, you know somewhere else. But um, but at the moment, if you if you gave me inquiries, I'd be able to happily you know put you on a waiting list. You know. It's not a big waiting list at the moment, for sure. I'm just starting out. But I offer one-to-one, -one, two-hour services. I call it kind of a rapid mindset training um, with Team CBT tools. Um, just because you get a pre-assessment questionnaire, you get a free 15-minute discovery call with me. We talk about your goals for the session, see if it's something that would be a good fit. But then we actually use the 25 good reasons not to change as part of the questionnaire. So you're able to highlight those resistances you're able to do your own daily mood log and, you know, put your own thoughts and your own feelings on there. And then it means that I can transcribe all that onto a, a sheet uh, that we can both edit at the same time across a video call and um, a Google sheet that we've created using the tools. And it really just allows you to get from empathy because you've told me probably five or six paragraphs about what, you know, tr troubles you're having, what you think are the issues in your life at the moment. So I can, you really hit the ground running of knowing what's the matter and then we go all the way through positive reframing, the magic button, the magic dial, all the way through to the distortions. And then um, usually into the externalization of voices as a way of being able to model all of the different cognitive techniques as well. And actually that two hour structure is all that's needed to be able to get, you know, these unlock and enlightenment moments. And it's happened, you know, a few, it's too many, too many times for me to realize that it's not 
going to work again. So I'm offering that as a one-to-one service. I'm also doing a separate kind of functional medicine practice where I do lots of functional testing, um, which can be remote as well, preferably face-to-face in time. Um, But it's really based around lifestyle habits and using the Team CBT model to be able to help with obtaining health habits and be able to remove resistance from that and also be able to gain better relationships. So actually this blueprint model that I've respected or I've, I've explained, it stands for, it's quite long-winded, but you'll get it when you have a one-to-one session with me. It's baseline testing and tracking. So knowing what your health is now, maybe doing brief mood surveys and knowing what your goals are, limiting toxins like alcohol, necessary drugs, those sorts of things, uh, understanding habits, um, E for exercise, P for purpose and spirituality, R for rest and relaxation, which is sleep and um, stress management tools, I for interpersonal or social relationships, N for nutrition and supplements, and T for thought change, which is Team CBT. And altogether, you basically get a matrix of where you want to start. If you think you can actually improve your alcohol, let's start there. If you think you can improve your nutrition, let's start there, but all with a flavor of helping you with Team CBT tools to unlock those cognitive and belief barriers that sometimes hold you back and give yourself a hard time so that's the model that's one-to-one but there's also a group program that i'm developing I'm actually rolling this out to the nhs groups free in coventry which is becoming really well received um a lot of people they they love the team cbt portion of it the most because that's the most eye-opening it's the most interesting for people it's the quickest thing as well um but hoping to be able to provide you know private groups for people who want to pay who are not in Coventry who are further afield and hopefully trying to spread the word to other practitioners who want to use this model this combined holistic model to be able to help their own patients in different ways so hopefully this will spread out and it'll be able to you know take team CBT from a medical point of view in a slightly you know different direction allowing it to be integrated but not change and not disrespect where it's come from and oh, that, that's what I'm offering at the moment you can find me um, I've got a website which is just um, www at the moment www.drtomgesson. Say that again. You're talking too fast on your oh, website. Yeah, so so uh, we'll have it in the show notes. But oh, yeah. Say it so uh, people can write it down if they want to go to your website and find out about the individual offerings yeah. as well as some group activity. I might want to si- sign up for. Exactly. So the individual ones, you can book in a free consultation, free free 50 minute discovery call right now if you're um, eligible. And uh, so it's www. Um, doctor, which is dr, um, the abbreviated, and then Tom Gedman. Dr. Yeah. T. O. M. G. E. D. M. A. N. Doctor Tom Gedman is all one word. That's right. All one word. D- dot Dr for Dr. T O M for Tom and Gedman, mm-hmm. G E D M A N dot com. And that's your website. And then they can get all kinds of information there. Is that right? Mm-hmm. That's right. Yeah. There's and, information there. And then uh, if you just type in Dr. Tom Gedman to Instagram or LinkedIn or Twitter, you'll be able to find me. You can follow the 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 very mediocre content that I'm doing at the moment that will hopefully get better with time. It might be interesting to see how things progress <laughs> after this session. Yeah. You Let's might get see. bombarded. So in, uh, to, to LinkedIn, Instagram, and the third Facebook, did you say? Yeah. On Facebook as well. And, and Facebook. And, and, uh, and I would just go and to X one of those one. and, and what? And X, formerly known as Twitter. Oh, X, yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. I see what you mean. And uh, and I, I'm kind of a novice with technology, but I would just go to one of those sites and then time t- t- just type in mm. at t- Dr. Tom Gedman. Is that how you do it? Or yeah, I think put, so. Yeah. And, okay. uh, um, and you'll just see the incredibly smug um, orange-backed icon just staring right at you, making you feel uncomfortable. <laughs> okay, good. Then I'll know the right guy. Oh, Can I okay. just ask one question? Mm-hmm. Tom, let's say a month from now, you're feeling anxious and worried about how well your program is getting off the ground and you're you're worried that you're take you're still taking a lot of time doing your videos. How would you talk back to those thoughts that they come up? Like if they come up again in a month? That's a really good question, Monday, because it, a part of me thinks that it's, it's the fact that things well, are Well, instead of pro- answering questions, why, why don't we just do solutions right now? It's a month sure. from now. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and, and what's your name? 
Uh, I'm positive, Tom. Yeah. And what's Rhonda's name? Negative, Tom. Okay. So, Tom, you know, all that work you did with David and a little bit with Rhonda, mm -hmm. it was all wasted. It, it didn't really change much. I, Just because you're all up, to, you're all uptight yeah. again today, and and you shouldn't be, and so this this proves that it didn't work. And Do you know, and, it, it is it doesn't because actually we did some amazing work there, and it and I always think every time you feel bad again, yeah, the same thoughts or similar thoughts come back, but it's just that you're missing one small thing. You're missing the thing that was needed to be able to get you past that next step. So next time they all come back, I'll have that key. And if they all come back and I can't fight them off, I, I know with confidence that I'll just need to do a little bit more work and find that extra unlock. It's the same things don't always work for the same thoughts, but you'll always learn something new if you examine these thoughts on this beautiful daily mood log that you've created. So it's just these insights that are incredible. And and actually the big thing that's changed is the fact that I've had this conversation with you and I've had, you know, the support from you and I had this, you know, almost this authorization that I can just do this as well, which is um which is amazing. And that will that will actually give me more confidence to be able to just pursue what I need to pursue. Nice. So So, so who won that one? I've, I want it huge, even though my okay. uh, you can hear my dog barking in the background. <laughs> She's okay, he's saying, Daddy, I want some attention. Get off the damn <laughs> podcast. Give me a yeah, bone exactly. or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that was really helpful. I like I like that. I've not done that before, going in, in a month in, in advance. So thank you. That's a good technique. I knew there was a reason why I came on here for that. Uh -huh. <laughs> and, you know, it's people an can listen to more of what you said, Tom, on the podcast you were on previously, which was 348. Mm -hmm. And that was only in June of this year. It wasn't that long ago. June of 2023. Yeah. yeah. No, it wasn't too long ago. And I'm glad to have been able to report back on some slight progress. But um at the time, I don't think even think I was even on any of these platforms. So I've made some changes. So hopefully, people can actually find me now. Um, but yeah, no, it's uh, it's great. Thank you, thank you for okay. this opportunity. Okay, we'll have ha have huge. a good one, and 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 thanks again, Tom. It's just always a pleasure hanging out with you. Yeah, you too. I'll have to try and get on a plane sometime with the with the family and the dog and come out and visit you. <laughs> come and bug you. That'd be great. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. Okay. Let's be with you guys. Thanks so much. Thank you. Bye-bye. This has been another episode of the Feeling Good Podcast. For more information, visit Dr. Burns' website at feelinggood.com, where you will find the show notes under the podcast page. You will also find archives of previous episodes and many resources for therapists and non-therapists. We welcome your comments and questions. If you want to support the show, please share the podcast with people who might benefit from it. You could also go to iTunes and leave a five-star rating. I am your host, Rhonda Borowski, the director of the Feeling Great Therapy Center. We hope you enjoyed this episode. I invite you to join us next time for another episode of the Feeling Good Podcast.